What's up guys, it's Trying to Try Tube. Today we're going to be talking about a couple things for this DLC, namely the two new legendary Pokemon. But first off, I want to show you guys a real leak that showed up on 4chan a few days ago that actually predicted this trailer. On February 24th, someone who's an insider in some sector of Pokemon leaked the contents of the trailer. Skabai DLC leak. I'm a programmer at a Pokemon outsourcing company. My English is very poor, so I use machine translation to complete post. If this don't sound like the fakest, the theme of the DLC is hidden treasure of Area Zero and Hexagon. Actually, a Pokemon outsourcing company, like a smaller company hired by Pokemon? Maybe they know stuff outside the trailer too. Version 1.2.0 includes dressable clothes as a reward for DLC purchasers. 35 bucks, get your outfits. We'll include Unaru Minamo and Tetsu no Isaha. Now, why does he know the Japanese names? So he's Japanese. These are Paradox Suikoden and Verizion, Water Dragon, and Grass Psychic. He is Japanese. A mystery Pokemon with green mask. Special Terrastal appearance. Now, we didn't get no special Terrastal appearance, so maybe what he's talking about is maybe when he's wearing that mask, that's some special Terrastal form for him. But we'll see. The third legendary Pokemon is a large blue turtle. But then here's some new information. We are working on a graphics enhancement patch for the new Nintendo Switch models that will be released alongside DLC 2. This is like leaking Nintendo stuff now. So, there's no way he's talking about just new Switch OLEDs. They might be talking about the Switch Pro, which... Why wouldn't the Zelda game come out on the Switch Pro or whatever the Switch Pro would be called? But he's saying around November, December time, or if this gets pushed to January next year, there's gonna be a new Switch model out. The Switch's life cycle should be coming to an end. We should be moving to the next console. It's been six years since the Switch came out. Maybe with Zelda, there's gonna be the normal one you can buy right now with the Switches. And then in winter of this year, there'll be like a more upgraded version if you buy it with the new console. It seems like an L from Nintendo to not just release Zelda with the new Switch. Obviously, he's translated this from Japanese to English, so this last sentence could be messed up. Another thing to note is that in the post, he added all these sparkles as his image, which are actually the sparkles you see in the zero of the new DLC logo. I'm taking it as this dude, wherever he works, actually knows more than we know. So that's pretty cool. All right, next thing I wanted to show you is actually information about where the DLC takes place. I'm talking about the first DLC, the land of Kitakami, which seems like it's based off the city in Japan where there's festivals. It's called Noroteo in the Spanish versions of the game. And someone on Reddit posts this blurb where it implies on some site, it says it takes place in northeastern Paldia, which of course is that bridge leading up to Kalos. That would mean they did mean for this part of the map to be accessible. But I went on their Spanish site and I searched everywhere for this and I can't find it. I also searched everywhere. You guys gotta clear this up to me. I don't know if this post is real. I mean, everyone in the comments is speculating about it. Ah yes, Southern France. Famous for its massive Japanese festivals. I'm talking about it because everyone kept sending me this post, but I can't find the origin to it anywhere. Next is Riddler Koo. So a bit before the presents went live, Koo was posting these weird riddles on his Twitter account. A picture of a Meowskarada and a Magnazone. Stuff no one can solve. One of the images was this. And everyone kept telling me to check it. Take a good look at this image. You know what it turns out this image is? It's the logo for <laughs> the DLC, the Hidden Treasures of Area Zero. Now... While this is a useless post, this is Ku. Ku knows the games better than us. So in the main Scarlet and Violet logos, inside the logo was a box with four symbols. We've identified all four of the symbols at this point. I'll put it up on screen right now. The grassland, the plate that's in area zero, the symbol that Sada and Toro drew on their whiteboard, and then the one from Heat's Notes. Now we've been introduced to four more symbols without even understanding what the first four symbols were. But I'm sure this DLC will give explanation to those first symbols. But now we got four more ones. So in place of the first symbol, he put a samurai. So maybe he's trying to imply that this is some sort of seashell. The second symbol, well, it looks like a ghost face to me, but Ku's shown it as a combi. And I, you know, Ku's trolling at this point. Then we got an eight with two swords. And so Ku's shown it with the done sparse then some kind of heart which he's teased with enamorous well this doesn't really help us but the last two things ku puts is on the left we got a map on the right we've got whatever that is 
<laughs> and then Zygarde in the middle. So Zygarde, of course, represents the hexagons. And then there's also the sparkles. Because who knows what the logo looks like. He's teasing at these. But these two symbols here might just represent the DLCs themselves. So this is maybe us going to the land of Kitakami. Undergoing the festivals. And whatever this is, is supposed to represent the second DLC. Listen, it's a useless riddle. I'm just showing it to you because everyone keeps sending it. All right. Then we move on to Matt Yukana on Twitter. So this is someone who likes to read in and data mine stuff in the new Pokemon games. And with Scarlet and Violet's new patch that came out that lets us catch Suicune and Verizon, he noticed something. My understanding of what he said here is that we've got 400 Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, right? Of the Pokemon that aren't allowed in the games, in the code, Game Freak messed with some of their Pokedex entries and deleted them. When this happened two years ago in the Gen 8 Pokemon games, they messed up a bunch of the Pokedex entries for Pokemon that weren't in the game, and those ended up making it in the DLC. So he's put together a list. I'll put a link in the description, but pretty much some of these Pokemon were already in the code of the base Scarlet and Violet, like Charizard and Dialga and Palkia. So maybe like 20 of those Pokemon are also listed here, but it shows us a bunch of ones, like the other Kanto starters now making it back. And what you'll notice in this list is that no legendaries are listed here except for Enamorous, and every starter Pokemon is also listed here, except for the three Unova ones. If this list is right, we'll get another 200-ish Pokemon. That raises it to us having around 600 Pokemon out of the... A thousand. One interesting thing about the Pokemon in this list is these are all Paradox candidates. Because every Paradox Pokemon in the game has their normal form in the game as well. So some Pokemon like Milotic, Porygon Z are here. Imagine a Paradox Dust Noir. And on that note, we don't have any starter Paradoxes. We had a bunch of Megas for starters in X and Y. We had Dynamaxes for starters as well. And even for Z moves, the three Alolan starters got them as well. So if this tradition continues, starter Pokemon have a good shot at getting Paradoxes. And Every starter is in this game, except for the Univan ones. I'm just saying. Okay, so I did want to talk about some cool stuff I noticed for the ogre ugly dude, but we'll save it for next time. Let's talk about the third legendary. It's pronounced Terrapagus, right? Terrapagus. I hope so. So sometimes you guys send me DMs with cool ideas. One of you guys sent me an idea that maybe Terrapagus is not the third legendary. Shout out to Adu. Bro, Terrapagus is not the third legendary disc Pokemon. So his idea is that Terrapagus is not the disc Pokemon because while we have Heat's drawing and this Pokemon lines up with Heat's drawing, there's another person's take who doesn't line up with this. And I'm talking about Sada and Turo because they also witnessed the third legendary and studied it in some form, we don't know how, but they described it as having hexagon interlocking plates. So let's go to Heat's drawing. Hexagon plates. Let's go to Tropagus. Those are pretty much interlocking too. Usually when you think of interlocking, you think of like puzzle pieces, but still those are all fit into place. But the problem here, I don't know if you guys notice, and I do did a good job pointing this out, is that how many hexagons do you see on Tropicus's back? Oh wait, you can count and let me know. 18? <laughs> These aren't hexagons, man. <laughs> Just take a second and count this with me. They look like hexagons, but they're not. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They're freaking pentagons. Now, like he says here, Heath can be wrong with this description because Keith was just high half the time he was in Area Zero. But how could Sada and Turo, who were studying this to the T, making tear orbs and everything, describe the third legendary wrong? We can even see in Area Zero, the giant crystals that come out of the ground are hexagons. But the back of Tropagus here has a bunch of pentagons with one hexagon. Uh, he's absolutely right. Sada and Tor would not have made that mistake. So there is something fishy here. So what idea are we going on here? Maybe Tropagus, this little baby guy, is actually a fragment of the real third legendary. And that's an interesting idea. Like the actual third legendary is so strong that little fragments of its power manifest as this super power tiny turtle. Or maybe if we go back to Heat's drawing, maybe all of these are little Tropaguses and that's actually a giant third legendary, you know, because we still don't know what this giant orb down here is. But the problem with this idea that there's a big turtle, <laughs> which is made up of tiny turtles, is that this is too similar to another legendary, which is Zygarde. And I don't think Pokemon would just overlap their ideas like that, especially when they're both hexagon based. You could go to other ideas like maybe what if there's like four Tropaguses and they're put in different parts of Paldia. One is in Blueberry Academy, one is in the land of Kitakami, one is in Area Zero. You bring them all together and you unseal the third legendary. Maybe someone plots to do that. Because we got to think. Heat, if he was entranced by something, it was probably the third legendary. So he goes to a trance and writes all these equations. Would this guy do it? This guy just looks like a peaceful terrestrial Pokemon. You get no 
equation, time travel, feelings at all from all this. It looks like he's just the gimmick of this game. Somehow time travel has to be involved in this. And if the machine could only be made deep in area zero using Tropagus's power, he has to be tied to it somehow and tied to the equations he made Heath draw. So there's clearly something missing here. There's no way this man made Heath write a bunch of equations. At least not what we see of this man so far. But you're absolutely right, Adu. That is not a bunch of hexagons. And I wanna know what you guys say in the comments about that. Is Terrapagus not the third legendary, but maybe a small fragment of him? Make sure you guys shank that like button. I got a bunch more to talk about, so stay tuned. I'll talk about it. And also let me know if one starter Pokemon could get a paradox form what is your number one pick for that i'll see you on the next video take care